I just finished making the video on the expected value of a binomial random variable and got stuck at this step here. Well, we computed it one way, but trying to compute it directly, we got stuck here. Stuck here. So, and I had a thought just uh, after I finished the video that we might be able to. I thought about a way, a, a way to approach this, so let's try it and see what happens. I haven't worked this out, so we're gonna we're gonna do it together. So let's try if we cancel this k, see if we can use the the binomial theorem for uh, in the case of k minus one, uh, or rather like n minus one or something like that. Let's see what happens. So write the the binomial coefficient, this thing here, is n factorial divided by k factorial divided by n minus k factorial. And k factorial is k times k minus one times k minus two, etc. So this becomes n factorial divided by k minus 1 factorial times n minus k factorial times all this other stuff. k from 0, oh that should be, uh, well infinity, not, not infinity, that should be n. So let's see if we can rearrange this somehow to use the binomial theorem for maybe for n minus 1 or something. Well, let's see, there's a problem. Oh, right, okay, so first, so I wasn't completely justified in doing this because uh, for the uh, when k is zero, then this is not this does not hold. But uh, the zero term, since when k is zero, this whole thing was zero, we could have we could have said that this is just for when k is one, or starting from one, the zero term drops out. Okay, and let's let let's try this. Let's let j equal k, what do we want, k minus 1 or k plus 1? If j equals k minus, let's see, if it's plus 1, then when, when k is 1, then j is 2. Okay, that's right, so I wanted minus 1. So when k is 1, then j is 0. So if we replace k by j here, what happens? So when, uh, so if we sum over j's, j goes from 0 to n minus 1, because when k is n, then j is n minus 1, and this is, let's go ahead and thinking ahead, since we're thinking about using n minus 1, let's pull out the n and we get n minus 1 factorial divided by, now, j is k minus 1, so this is j factorial, and this is, uh, right, okay, looks like we're on the right track here, things are starting to look good, so if we had, <coughs> we could say this is n minus 1 minus, let's see, what would it be, k minus 1, n minus 1, so n minus k equals n minus 1 minus k plus 1, which is n minus 1, minus k minus 1. So this is n minus 1 minus, oh, and and this is looking very good because that's j factorial. Okay, and now let's see. So alpha, or k, so k, so, so k equals j plus 1 so let's make this j and we'll pull out a so that was equals n and not that this equals n times 
alpha, we pull out an alpha, and this is n minus 1, right, so n minus k was this, so it's n minus 1 minus j. All right, so now things are looking very good. So that equals that. And now let's let, um, just to make things crystal clear, let's let m equal n minus 1. So that equals m plus 1 and uh, times alpha sum from j equals 0 to m of m factorial divided by j factorial factorial times m minus j factorial alpha to the j, 1 minus alpha to the m minus j. And we can apply the binomial theorem. Here, this is, um, so this is the PMF. We can just apply the fact that the PMF sums to 1. Uh, well, this is the PMF of a of a uh, binomial m alpha random variable. So this sums to 1. So this whole thing is just 1 equals 1. So the whole thing, we just get m plus 1 times alpha. And we are in very good shape because m plus 1 is equal to n and we get n times alpha. Very nice. So, and of course that's what we got before using the much, e the much easier path of uh, using the, the linearity of expectation here. So, so by using this linearity trick we avoided this whole mess of factorials and binomial coefficients and binomial theorem. All this, all this, uh, this extra work we were able to skip using this simple little trick.